It was only a few decades ago that we humans were first able to see what our planet looks like from the outside. Every time I look at this picture, I just think about how beautiful our planet really is. So blue, so perfect, but so small. In this vast universe, we must remember we have nowhere else to go. This is our only home. Climate change. Climate change is a global and a very, very urgent issue. The consensus today is that we are in a state of global warming. And if we don't do something about this, we will face consequences which are way beyond our control. I said this exact sentence almost a year ago at the same event, but not a lot has changed since then. And I will continue to keep saying this until we start taking the urgent and major steps required to actually combat climate change. Scientists say we have now reached a tipping point in terms of climate action and say we have around 10 years to avoid the most severe and drastic consequences of climate change. The climate is changing and the trends are very, very clear. Carbon dioxide levels are at the highest that they've ever been in since history. Annual temperatures are rising. Sea levels are rising. And besides all of this, we are now also starting to see significant changes in weather patterns around the world. Climate change research and science has come a long way in the last few decades. Scientists have now found evidence to link climate change and weather disasters. So what they're saying is climate change is increasing the frequency and intensity of extreme weather events around the globe, like droughts and floods. I first heard about climate change when I was nine or 10 years old. I was watching a wildlife documentary on polar bears when I first heard of this concept. At that point, climate change was not something which was affecting me personally. It was something happening in the polar regions, the Arctic and the Antarctic, the effects of which I would feel in about 75 to 80 years' time. But that changed for me a couple of years ago. In the months of May, June and July, in my home country, India, Hindus make their annual pilgrimage journey to these temples in the lower Himalayan mountains. Just to put it into context, it's something like the Mecca journey which the Muslims make. So every year, out of a population of 1.3 billion, Hindus go from all over the country to visit these temples. But in the year June 2013, disaster struck. Unprecedented rainfall created havoc, death, and destruction. Men, women, and children were swept away in the roaring waters as flash floods came rushing down the hill with tremendous force. Yes, that region of North India does experience a lot of rainfall, and it is prone to flooding. But this, this was something very different. Meteorologists confirm that the amount of rainfall that this region saw in those few days is the highest that they've seen in close to about 100 years' time. Out of the thousands of people who went to these temples in those few days, 5,000 of them never made it back home. This is now being known as one of the worst natural disasters to have occurred in the 21st century. This is when climate change became personal. It was no longer something happening in the polar regions. It was no longer something which was going to affect me 90 years down the line. It was affecting my country and my people. Now, talking about climate change affecting us personally, um, I've been living in the UK for close to around five years now, and remembering February this year, the 21.2 degrees Celsius that we had, I think it's needless to say that the climate is changing. Average temperatures are increasing everywhere. In the city where I was born, on the east coast of India, average temperatures have increased by over 1.5 degrees in the last 100 years. In these last 100 years, humankind has developed at an extraordinary pace. But this development has come at a significant cost to our environment. We humans, intentionally or otherwise, are driving so many species towards extinction. 
The last three years have been the hottest that this planet has ever seen since the time we started keeping records. It is a fact that we are emitting huge amounts of carbon dioxide every single year. It is a fact that these weather events are growing more and more intense and frequent. It is a fact that our planet is getting hotter. And even with all this evidence around us and all the effects which we are seeing, there are still people out there, important and powerful people out there, who do not believe in the idea of climate change and are still in denial. That desperately needs to change. I'm sure we all see the news on television and we've seen the amount of human suffering which is going on in Mozambique right now because of the cyclone Idai. A whole city, Beira, destroyed because of climate change. We see these weather events, we feel bad, but we don't feel responsible. Indifference to the impact of our actions on the lives of others is a form of passive exploitation. Is it the fact that the maximum impact of these weather events are being felt in developing countries and not developed countries a reason for our indifference? We meet and we set these targets which are so quickly forgotten. The biggest emitters are the ones who are the most powerful and can walk away from these commitments with impunity. The impact, however, is felt on societies which can least afford it or have nothing to do with it. Human behavior naturally brings us to point fingers at one another. Everybody has found somebody or the other to blame for this issue. I understand it though, it's comforting to believe that it's not our actions which is causing this change. But the, point to point, but, the point, but the time to point fingers is long gone. What we need now, urgently and desperately, is action. Now, another very important question arises here. We need action, but who should be the one to take the lead in this action? Is it maybe a fisherman in the Philippines or in the Indian state of Kerala? Or is it maybe a farmer in the Mozambique who just lost everything in the cyclone? Looking at the per capita energy consumption of various countries shows us very clearly who has the moral obligation. The high income countries have been consuming and throwing huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the air for close to about 130 years now. The per capita energy consumption of some developed countries like the USA is many, many times higher than any developing country in Africa or say South Asia. The developed world very clearly has the moral obligation. But the point is, we not only have an obligation, but we are also the only ones who have the financial and technical capabilities to actually address this issue. But then again, the point remains that any one country alone cannot do much about climate change. It needs to be a global effort and every single country, developed or developing, needs to take part in it. We need to realize that climate change is no longer something which is affecting us 50 years down the line. Climate change is happening right now. Climate change is going to affect your future and mine. We, as individuals, need to focus on cutting down our own carbon footprints. Now, I'm sure you've all heard of this before. Am I right? I, I think I am. And you're probably wondering why I'm reiterating something which we all already know. But that's the point, isn't it? We know what the problem is. We know what the consequences are. We have the solutions, but we are still not acting. We need to realize that the future, the decisions for our future and the generations after us are being taken right now. Let's make sure we make the right decisions. As a second year economic student, I myself cannot do much about this issue. The maximum I can do is try and reduce my own carbon footprint and try and get other people to think more critically about this issue. I believe we need to keep reminding ourselves that our personal actions do matter. We do have the capability to change what our governments are doing. So let's do that. Because time is running out. The tipping point, as I said before, is right around the corner. So let's take the lead 
and be the cause for change. Because we need to realize that we have the capability to arrest and roll back. What we need now is the collective will and commitment to get things done. We need to realize that the future of this beautiful blue planet, the future of our planet and our futures depend on nobody else but us. Thank you so much.